What's up guys, this is Fortune Zuri Gay, aka Zapetje the Creator. Welcome to another YouTube video. By the way, we are just currently sitting at around 32 subscribers, which is really small. So I would really appreciate a like or a subscribe or even a share if this kind of content is your thing. Not forgetting to comment down below if you just want to give props or if you feel like there is something that we need to improve in the channel. So I upgraded my RAM. Yes, I put 12 gigs of RAM in this small 14 inch baby. As you have seen on the B-roll at the beginning, I'm using a Lenovo Yoga 530 as my daily driver. And yes, I'm seeing some of you, it's not a potato. From assignments to presentations to some light gaming and light video editing, I have to say I'm pretty impressed with what you could do with the Ryzen 3 2200U processor with two cores and simultaneous multi-threading bringing it to four threads. It has a decent base clock of 2.5 gigahertz and with some uh, good cooling, let's say maybe a cooling pad, you can bring it up to 3.3 gigahertz. The three Vega graphics processing cores are not bad. I, that's for games like Devil May Cry 4, Euro Truck Simulator and Far Cry. I could get in a measly 55 frames per second though with the cooling pad and maybe your charger is let's admit it this is a low power apu So why did I shell out $50 for 8 gigs of RAM? So I found out that on most of my tasks are mostly a memory bottleneck before I get CPU bottleneck. That is 8 gigs of RAM just wasn't cutting it for multitasking. If you use Adobe's Creative Suite, well, you probably know what I'm talking about. Uh, sometimes you have to jump between Premiere and After Effects and maybe open a few Chrome tabs while watching some YouTube video or something. So, there's a lot of RAM that's needed there. Guys, rendering on 8 gigabytes of RAM is a nightmare. It's just, oh, Bruh. You just have to wait almost an hour just to uh, render out some clips and not to forget throwing in an adjustment layer where there's color grading. It's just a nightmare, guys. When you run this both two in parallel, it would sound like you are on a runway with an airplane ready to take off.
So upgrading my RAM definitely mitigated a lot of those problems. And I'm sure it would mitigate some of yours. And I mean, if you have the, the, the money, go ahead, just upgrade your RAM. Though there are a few particular things you have to pay attention to before buying your RAM. Best would be the generation of a memory. For example, I bought a stick of 8 gigabytes of a DDR4 memory. So there's also DDR3, DDR2, those are old generations by the way. So uh, these generations are not cross compatible. You can't put a, a DDR4 stick inside the DDR3 a compatible uh, chip. So you should pay attention to that. Always get the RAM that is compatible with uh, your CPU generation. For instance, if your CPU supports DDR4 memory, buy DDR4 memory. If you buy DDR3 memory, it won't work. Another thing you might want to consider is the form factor of your memory. The memory you use on your desktop and the memory you use on your laptop are different in the outline sense. I mean in the form factor they are. So you might find out that the memory in your desktop is bigger, yeah, considerably bigger in size as compared to your laptop memory. A laptop memory is called sodium memory, which means a uh, small outline, small inline jaw memory module. So that's what sodium means. So you'd want to get sodium memory for your laptop. So if you have the generation covered in the type of form factor, you are okay, but maybe you would also have to consider the clock speed of your memory module. For instance, if you do get a, a module of a memory, you might find it written 2600 megahertz, 2666 and 3600 megahertz. Well, this is the, the speed at which the memory uh, transfers uh, data between it and the central processing unit so you would probably want to get memory that's the same with the other memory module in your uh, laptop for example in my system i have two i have a, a dual channel uh, cpu which is at a 2666 per module so the other four gigabyte stick stick was 2666 so i bought another module which is eight gigabytes which is 2666 and they both have the same frequency so that would be okay in terms of stability you might run into instability if you get you know different memory modules with you know, different frequencies so make sure you get memory which is more or less the same frequency or better frequency for instance uh, it would be better if you get something like a 3600 uh, mega transfer or 2600 mega its memory uh, both of those in your dual channel system would work quite well with it. Another thing to consider would be cast latency. A simple way to put it is a uh, cast latency uh, tells you about the delay that the RAM goes through before it accesses the memory from itself. So simply putting it, the lower the cast latency number, the better. For instance, a module of RAM that is a, a case latency of 12 is better than a module frame that has a case latency of 16. So you might uh, have this conundrum of uh, a module having 3600 uh, megahertz but with a very high case latency. So generally, the module with the, the smallest case latency number is the best. But I wouldn't pay too much attention to this. Well, yeah, yeah. So this marks the end of our YouTube video. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do drop a subscribe. We are currently standing at 32 subscribers. Guys, please subscribe and drop a comment. If there's something you don't like about the video, please let us know in the comment section. Is that would help us improve a lot. And probably the consistency of the YouTube videos will be as much as you would want them to be. So this is Zapicha Creator, the creator. I'm signing out. Peace.